Great and stuff. Hello, good morning. Hello, how are you? I was just saying, I'm feeling kind of tired and stuff. So I oh, made sure that I made notes so I didn't sit here saying, um. Yeah, I'm very tired this morning too. Is that there, you know, it just, the mornings are so gray and wet and chilly. It just, it's so hard to wake up. I know. I know. And every morning this week has been that way. So it's kind of like built up at this point. Good morning, Liz. Uh, Leah has such a beautiful Halloween decoration. My costume is lit limited to my Harry Potter style rugby well, shirt. <laughs> that is very uh, appropriate for this time of year. You've got your Harry Potter wand. Also. I do have my wand. Um, yeah. So it's kind of hard when you're only being seen from here up to do a good costume. But of course, Leah, Leah can. Leah can do a great costume. Are you going to tell them about your costume yesterday? Um, I, I, I was a dandelion gone to like seed with the, the, all the little fluffies on top of my head. It was, it was very large because I like large costumes. Um, we do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I really do like to go all out for costumes. So yeah, I, I was a dandelion yesterday. So it was super cute, but it was it was too large to be here on the show. Like it was much too large. It, I, I I couldn't sit where I have to sit in my room. It would it, it, things are too close. <laughs> yes, very cute though. Um, so can I tell you about my trick or treating last night? Yes. So I really, for our viewers at home, um, I really just enjoy handing out candy. The street that I live on does not get much traffic, but the streets around it get a lot of traffic. So I have, like, there's people, I can see them like crossing this and, you know, crossing, crossing past my street on both sides. And I'm like, no, come to me. I want to give you candy. Um, and so after the first year or two, I decided that I would give out full size candy bars because I don't get that many kids and that will double my joy because I, like, I get to see them. If I'm only going to see 15 kids get candy, at least they can get a giant candy bar and then I'll, Right, you know, I would really go to your house. Makes me happier. So um, I started doing that and um, every year, you know, I want to get like a few more kids and a few more kids. Sometimes I stand on my sidewalk and I like, I like wave, like as people are going by down there, I'm like, come down here. And I'm like, I kind of feel like a witch. Like I'm just collect, I'm giving out like these, I'm luring them to my home. Right. Yeah with the best candy or whatever and then but I don't want to eat them I just want to see them happy and then go along on their way you know, um, in the oven no Hansel and Gretel no, none of that none of that I just want them to collect candy and leave no creepy van as Liz suggests <laughs> no I don't see and that's there's there's such a line and I feel like I'm solidly on the wholesome side of the line um, yeah is very wholesome <laughs> so so last night I had very low hopes because very cold very rainy very COVID so mm -hmm. you know um but I did end up I ended up having um I gave out all of my full-size candy bars which was I want to mm -hmm. say 23 or so because um I Maybe. had bought them sporadically and I you know so that wasn't that bad. And I just basically, I put the bowl out. It was only drizzling for some of it. So I just kind of put the bowl out far away from my porch and they could help themselves. And I stood on the porch, but I will say there was, and, and so I got to see the joy. I got to see, oh, look what I got. It's a whole bag of Skittles, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. And then um, I did, there was this girl who came up and then she said to the other, her other friend who was with her when they got to the bowl, she's like, I told you she had good candy. And so, <laughs> yes. You're getting the reputation as the house with the good candy. I know, which means at some point I'm going to begin investing thousands of dollars in full-size candy bars because I don't want to disappoint anyone, but that's probably several years down the road. Um, and as it is now, I like to know that people are telling tales of my greatness. Um, <laughs> Your reputation. So anyway, my Halloween went pretty well. I was really expecting to not give out any candy except to my neighbors and, uh, someone who works at the library who lives near me um but be, I did I gave out more candy than that so it was satisfying did you get anybody this year I I fell asleep well I haven't really figured out how I was going to do the whole candy give out because you know the COVID mm -hmm. thing you don't you mm -hmm. don't want to get close to people especially mm -hmm. like oodles of strangers right now yeah. so I was like oh, I have to lay down and I totally fell asleep and I woke up at 8.30. So 
I have mm -hmm. two really large bags of Halloween candy that I guess I'm going to have to eat. Right. Uh, <laughs> no, right. maybe, maybe I will take some into work and share. But yeah, um, yeah I, I slept through trick or treat. Well, it was very sleepy weather, you know, it was very chilly. I ha I ended up putting a coat on when I was sitting out there, you know, and I was still kind of like, <laughs> yeah. So oh, and let's know if yeah. it happened here. We we did. We had it Thursday night. I think um, they tried for years and years and years. Um, they always did it like the Thursday before. And then last year, our new mayor was like, no, we're going to do it on Halloween. So last year we did it actually on Halloween. But this year um, we did it last night um, because I don't think they wanted kids out. Like on, been on Thursday for as long as I've been trick or treating. Yeah. Except for last year. Well, last or whatever, whatever year they did that. I didn't remember if it was last year or not, but last year my trick or treating experience was over. It's been completely overshadowed by the fact that there, we had that terrible wind and it blew my gate off my fence, and my gate is still not reattached to my fence. If anyone on here is watching and happens to work for a fencing company and or knows how to attach a gate, um, you just you just leave a note in the comments because I've contacted fencing companies, and if it's not a new, like basically they only do stuff with new fences, yeah. you know, or like the fence that they put up. I don't know who put up the fence and I don't know if it's like the brand that they work with or whatever. And I've even had people come out and look at it and no one is willing to fix it. And I feel like that might help those problems I have with animals in my backyard when I put my food. I don't know. You had the animals in your backyard long before. I did. I did. I did. The raccoon dug, dug a hole under the gate long before the gate blew down. But... <laughs> You're just hopeful. Hopeful is hopeful that that raccoon yeah. problem for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sorry that yours was lackluster, but at least. And Liz says that she doesn't even know the rules where she lives, but it doesn't matter because her light will be off, which sounds very grinchy oh, slash grugy, <laughs> the Halloween version of that. Is there a Halloween version of the Grinch or Scrooge? I don't know. It's got to be. Yeah, well... Well, I don't know. It's Liz. It's Liz. Liz. <laughs> no, that's okay. If you don't have a setup where it's easy to give out candy um, without getting close to people, that's yeah. also, if like, like I said, I just kind of stuck the ball on the, the sidewalk and, you know, help yourselves if that's what you're comfortable with, but it kept us far apart, which seems to be the important thing. But if you don't have a setup where you can do that, then, you know. I'm sure I could have figured something out, but I just... You were sleepy, man. It was. <laughs> this, this weather has got me like all, all up for the naps. I'm all about naps right now. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> um, I also had on my good morning, list. Good morning, Melanie. I also had on my list uh, bonus borrows. Ooh, yes. You want, you want to talk about bonus borrows? Sure. Um, starting on Sunday, which is November 1st, for the entire month of November, um, Hoopla is once again offering bonus borrows. Those are the borrows. Those are the titles that you can borrow that do not count against your 10 limit per every month. Um, so you'll, you can get some extra titles. They're pre-selected titles from Hoopla. But if you check out any of the bonus borrows, they don't count against you. So. Yeah, which is just so nice, especially as everyone keeps saying, you know, the more we're going to we need to be staying in, you know, to have have a little backup entertainment maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now that the weather's turning cold and we're stuck inside, it's it's nice to have those those options. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, I know, you know, we'll still have we'll have days that are days that are more pleasant and days that are less pleasant or whatever. But it is unfortunate that you can't just like count on being able to do something outside. Like, oh yeah. we'll we'll meet up and we'll meet outside. Like isn't like a given. Yeah. the way that it had been for a few months, you know? Yeah. yeah. I had a friend who'd come over. We'd sit on the porch for a while, her on one end, me on the other, and we'd just chat. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't want to sit out in the cold now. So <laughs> yeah. 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 You have to, and you have just have to plan a lot better, even if it's like tolerable for a little bit, like there's so much rain too. And, you know, if you don't have a covering over you, I don't know. I'm picturing myself with an umbrella in the freezing cold. <laughs> meet up with someone and at least 
least that video chat, right? That's what video chat's for. <laughs> like this, we can be with right. you. <laughs> Reading anything spooky or watching any scary movies? Are you are you a scary movie person? Well, there's a handful of answers to that. I not really. I don't like. I don't. I don't like being scared. But for some reason, I've kind of been getting into it in recent times, and specifically lately, like. I don't, I don't like jump scares because I get scared very easily. And then I also, I don't like, I don't like things that I look back on. Like if I wake up in the middle of the night and mm. look back on it and then it really freaks me out. And I don't like things that I'm afraid are actually going to happen to me. So that, that does kind of limit things, but thankfully I don't, I've got worried by a lot of supernatural things. So that does open that realm because I'm not really specifically worried that that's going to happen to me. Yes. Um, so I've been trying to watch more stuff and read more stuff because I like, I'm learning that I kind of like that little like adrenaline boost. And I like reading and seeing and watching and seeing how they've crafted something to be scary, I think is really interesting and how they build the tension and stuff. But then there is a very hard and fast line over which I get, uh, when I cross, I become very afraid. And um, one thing that I watched in recent times that pushed me over that line was Invisible Man. <laughs> You mm -mm. um with elizabeth moss so the thing about that movie is and you know it's based it's based on quite loosely um the invisible man story by hg wells and um so it's in that sense you know vaguely sci-fi or whatever but it's just very 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 suspenseful and that suspense is very difficult it was very difficult for me to bear and um the movie is just so well done. It is so taut and so tense. And if you're into that, it is just so impressive. You don't know where he is, man. She's afraid. She's, she can sense that there's something yeah. going on, but you don't know where he is. And it freaked me out so badly. I uh, was videoing with a friend who shall remain nameless in this chat um, about how afraid I was. And I would just kept, I kept like turning on the video and I was like, it was like seconds at a time. I'm like, okay, now she's crawling toward that door. She's crawling toward that attic door. She's still crawling toward the attic door, but I just, when it opens, is he going to pop out? I don't know. Um, but overall it was very, very worth it. And that building of suspense and the maintaining of suspense was really, really good. I'll have to check that one out. I am one of those people who are and I scream. Um, but even like when I know it's coming, I, I can't help myself. I still will jump and scream. People in movie theaters, like, will laugh at me. I am not even kidding. People in, I have had people laugh at me in the movie theaters. I watched a movie, went to the theater. Um, Daniel Radcliffe was in it. Um, the Woman in Black. The Woman in Black? Yes. Yeah. And at one point, water comes out of the spigot but it just i screamed and i jumped and like everyone in the theater is looking at me and i'm just like water water oh my God. <laughs> like i will be watching a tv show with my mother and i'm like somebody's under that bed and then somebody will come out from under the bed and i will scream and she's like you knew somebody was under the bed i'm like it was just a gas i didn't know yes. so I, I i get very i get very into movies um and especially, I don't, I don't feel like I get into books the same way. Like I will feel that, like, you know, but I don't scream or anything. Yeah. Books, but it's with movies. Oh my god! Like my my heart pounds and yeah. I will rock because I'm so anxious and yeah. I went to see. I'm dating myself here. Um, <laughs> I was in college when the Scream movie came out, uh -huh. and um, I went to see that with a group of friends. And we we were late to see it, so it wasn't like the crap theater wasn't packed or anything. But there were my friends. We were sitting in a row, and then a couple rows behind us, there were uh, there was another group of people. And we were like the only ones in the theater, and you know nothing. It wasn't like a scary scary moment in the in the theater. But my friend, not the one sitting right next to me, the one sitting on the other side of her, reached around and tapped me on the back. And I screamed and I came up out of my chair and the people behind were laughing. So they had seen her doing it. So they knew it was coming. And I was just out of my seat and screaming. 
Oh yeah. my God. Well, well, you know what? Maybe that is the source of it. Maybe that's the traumatic experience that now makes me unable to watch horror movies. Without well, it, it's been like this my whole life. Um, my my brother-in-law, he's like, I remember we were watching this. I was like in sixth grade um, and he was dating my sister because, and he's like, you were behind that chair. You were just like, you're running in place watching. I. That's another thing I do when I'm scared. I will run in place. So. Oh my yeah. gosh. Me at scary movies. It's hysterical. So. Well, it doesn't like, maybe it's better if you view them at home. So you don't disrupt the rest of the movie theater. I provide entertainment for the rest of the movie theater um andrew says her mom also does that but it's less of a scream but more like a comedy noise so that also sounds entertaining i would love to hear that noise <laughs> and then judith said that you also have movie and book anxiety and you have to have spoilers which i completely understand and that has helped me with some scary movies but i will say that was part of my issue with invisible man it didn't matter i knew essentially what was going to happen and i knew essentially he was there it was that that building of her just these, there were these really wide shots. And so she would be like in the house and she would just be looking around and your eyes are scanning around too. Are you going to see like the flutter of a curtain? Are you going to see something or are you not? And it was just like the scene itself was so well built or something that like, I don't know, because it didn't even matter what was going to happen. But I also understand that because if you know what to expect, then you can just watch it and appreciate it for what it is. And right. I advise that in any high tension scenario. Andrea wants to know how long it took you to watch that two hour movie. Um, with all the pausing, I think it was ultimately, I was it, I, I want to say it took me three hours um, because I started it at a time when I was like, I'm going to watch this and then I'll have like an hour to decompress before I have to go to bed. But it ended up being watching it up until I'm past bedtime. And then, yeah. and then I'm sure I don't remember, but I probably had some very interesting dreams that night. And it was like, well, and that was the thing. My body was so tense. I was like, I'm going to be sore tomorrow because I'm sitting here like, <laughs> yes, I got a butt cramp. I, when I was watching the that that woman in black movie, like I was just I was so clenched, like every muscle in yeah. my body was tight. I got a cramp in my butt. I don't know. Sure that. I don't know if you should watch The Invisible Man. Um, I can't wait to watch it now. <laughs> well, best of luck to you. Feel free to text me throughout. Um, okay. So do you have something spooky or like a go-to type of thing that you do during Halloween? Um, I'm more about the dress up. Um, I'll be honest mm -hmm. with you. I, I do love, um, you know, a scary story or of some sort, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm more about the dress up. I'm go yeah. We've missed a couple comments from Melanie. Um, okay. She loves Hitchcock, Hitchcock movies, the classic Hitchcock. And um, Coraline, she loves that book. That Aww. that's a spooky book. Yeah. I've heard Coraline things about that being spooky, spooky, but I've never, I've never read it or watched it. Yeah. Um, I do like watching um, sp spooky. I like watching scary movies when I can handle them, but I also like watching ones that are just like spooky and seasonal or whatever. And so I watched this one not too long ago. It's from the '90s. It's called The Frighteners, and it stars Michael J. Fox. And he is like a ghostbuster okay. and um, he will go to people's homes and, you know, get the ghosts out. But it turns out he's actually working in cahoots with the ghosts, the real ghosts. And he like sends them in and he can see ghosts. And so he sends them in to like cause trouble or whatever. And then he gets paid like 500 bucks to do nothing. He like waves a wand around. And, um, <laughs> and so, so that, but the, the, of course, the premise of the movie is he gets called to a home where there's a real you know, a real situation, not the ghost that he sent in. And then also um, there's like a serial killer thread. And then there's a thread of like him and why he can see ghosts. He had this thing happen. And, you know, ever since his near death, death experience, it's him kind of working through that or whatever. And I would recommend it. It wasn't like scary, but it was yeah. entertaining and it was like fun and funny. Like the ghost part were fun and funny, um, but it had like enough of like the true, true ghost story to like be, you know, creepy or whatever. And um. So I think it was from like the mid nineties or something, Michael J. Fox, it's called The Frighteners. 
And I was just, I was happy to have watched it. And the slew of Halloween movies I watched this year, I think that was my favorite. <laughs> okay, I will have to check that one out. And Andrea, let us know it's directed by Peter Jackson. There, thank um, you, Andrea. <laughs> um, <laughs> Melanie says that Coraline is very spooky for a juvenile book. I have to agree. I didn't read the book. I, I did watch, I did watch it though. And I, I watched it with my nephew and I was like scared <laughs> watching. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was very creepy. Um, and Mary says she would definitely watch The Invisible Man with me just to see how I react. So, and she wants, so she could laugh at me. Thanks, Mary. You're a true friend. <laughs> well, at least you would just react and keep going rather than continuing to pause it. So it takes 50% longer to watch it. Although I would probably pause it to make a couple of trips to the restroom. Cause you know, <laughs> that's, that's what I do. Melanie yeah. recommends the original American Werewolf in London as a good creepy movie. I've not seen that. Nor have I. That sounds like something I could add to my list. For sure. I'm going to write it down. <laughs> as far as movies go, I also watched, um, I don't know if anyone here has watched both of the It's It Chapter 1 and It Chapter 2. Um, I really, really enjoyed those, um, but they didn't scare me at all, um, mm -hmm. which helped me enjoy them better. Like I enjoyed the story. And then especially the second one, I watched almost like as a creature feature because there's just like so much crazy stuff that like it can turn into. And like watching that was like entertaining and everything, but it was not scary to me. So that like makes it easier to watch and easier to appreciate it. But it's a good movie outside of just attempting to scare you. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of werewolves, actually, I don't know because it's, it's not speaking of werewolves. Um, the the stories of like vampires and um, Dracula, those I, I like those kinds of stories. And I have to say, a few years ago, around this time of year, I actually read Dracula, and Me too. It, it was just it was really good. I. I, like it's one of those things like it's always referenced it's always a halloween costume like dracula we all know mm -hmm. but yeah. i've never actually read dracula so mm -hmm. reading that was really good yes i read it last fall it was so good i really really liked it and then since then i've like sought out a lot more vampire things and really enjoyed it um have you more. read it i read it uh something in the blood it's a biography of bram stoker mm -hmm. So it's cool really interesting. and like his, his upbringing and where he got ideas and yeah. what was going on culturally at the time. And yeah, like, that's and awesome. And, 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 yeah. Yeah. That one. Yeah. When I read Dracula last year, I read a Norton edition. So it had essays and stuff with it. And one of the essays that I read um, points out that after the original Dracula was written, um, basically starting, um, starting with the movies, everyone abandoned Dracula having this giant mustache, but in the book, he has a giant mustache. Mm -hmm. But after that, like every, once you first saw him on screen in cinema, a giant mustache was no longer a part of Dracula and that's fine. But like, just, you went for that very first representation on screen. And after that, the mustache just it went. Yeah. It, it, it would, wouldn't it get messy? You know, if you're drinking Probably. blood, wouldn't Probably. it? Probably. Probably a hygiene issue. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot more comments. Andrea also likes American Werewolf in London. Mary says It Follows is still from one of her favorites from a year back. I've checked that out almost every year and never watched it because I'm afraid that I'm going to be too scared. Um, and Mary also recommends The Haunting of Bly Manor. And then Andrea, back to American Werewolf in London, says that the transformation transformation is kind of funny, though. <laughs> Um, and she's also saying that it has the guy who was in the Dr. Pepper commercials in it. I'm a pepper. She's a pepper. Wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? I remember those commercials. <laughs> I do not. You're too young. Um, it follows. I thought I had something about it follows in my notes, but I don't think I did. That's okay. And Andrea says the audio version of Dracula is narrated by Tim Curry and Alan Cumming. Ooh. I, I did the audio version and I don't think I listened to that audio version. Mm -hmm. I only had I 
portray Andrea here and say that she listens to Audible. So. Oh. oh. I have opinions <laughs> about Audible and Amazon Publishing and um, we do not have enough time for my opinions today. Right, we're, we're, we're 25 minutes in. We'll just have to make that its own episode. Yeah. <laughs> I've talked a lot about stuff. What, what do you have? Um, I've got a couple more books. Um, this is Making the Monster, the Science Behind uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. It's really interesting. It talks about like, like what was going on at the time and the science behind it. Like, and it was at that time, like when, you know, like electricity was like this new thing mm -hmm. and they would do like science, um, like, like they have like science parlors and people would like show off new, new bits of science yeah. and um, like medicine was advancing and like, but it, a lot of the medical advancements came from like, you know, digging up bodies and, you know, so, so that kind of information yeah. really kind of, you know, put it together. And what do you get? You, you get this monster, but it, it really kind of talks about how she came up with the idea and, um, you know, just, yeah. Would, would that, would something like that be possible? And why would maybe they think that something like that would be possible? So it's, That's cool. um, yeah. But it's uh, Catherine Harkup is the is the author, uh, okay. the making, making the monster. So okay. I got that one. Um, I also picked up some other books. Books. Um, this one I thought looks really cool. It's by Adriana Mather, who's actually a descendant of Cotton Mather, who was like really one of the main driving forces behind the, the Salem witch trials. Mm -hmm. He was um, one of the, the the ministers who was like, oh, these children, you know, they're being mm -hmm. influenced. Um, she's a descendant of Cotton Mather. But in the book, the character is also a descendant of Cotton Mather. Mm -hmm. Mather and her family um, moves back to Salem. Okay. So um, she's not um going to be liked there naturally yeah. um especially by this group of girls known as the descendants who were da, 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 mm -hmm. descendants of the people yeah. witches of course but um she's cursed she's got a curse and she um sees ghosts and so there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going on and like you know <sighs> lots lots going on here but it's really it's really interesting knowing that the author is in fact a descendant of Cotton Math Mather yeah. um, and as is the character. So that had just yeah. add a whole whole layer to it that is really That's cool. really cool. I don't know that I have much like experience reading witch books at this point. So yeah. maybe that'll be my next year thing. Uh, Mary posted a link that I had asked her to post. The New York Times had a map that was the 50 scariest books each that were set in each state. Um, and so that's kind of a, like a fun geographic way to read. And the one for Ohio was um, The Bedeviled by Thomas Cullinan. He's the person who wrote The Beguiled, which is okay. the two movies. But this is The Bedeviled. And uh, basically a family, someone in the, like an, an aunt or something dies and a family moves into this Ohio farmhouse where a curse descends upon them. And the teenage oh. son... The teenage son is possessed by the spirit of a civil war general who was also a Satanist. So do with that what you will. Um, it's written in the 70s. So I read some Goodreads reviews of it, um, which are just, Goodreads is just a wonderful place to get, take the temperature of something. Um, and I, I get the impression it is, it is in some ways very dated. Um, but, but if you're getting into, if you just want some good, what was the quote? A good romp through 1970s satanic cult paranoia. This is the book for you. <laughs> I, I like I like that um, that description. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, and Liz says, "Shocking, Colorado is The Shining." <laughs> that does make sense. <laughs> so, um, I have. Another book, it is Octavia E. Butler, The Fledgling. Um, they find a, a little black girl in the woods who looks like she has been like attacked of like some kind. She's got these 
little wounds that look like they should, in fact, be fatal. But it turns out she's actually um, a vampire. And she is a vampire who can walk in the sun. So, like, there are horses trying to take her down. And there's this whole, like, struggle and battle. And it's like, are humans really the bad guys? Or are all bad guys only the humans like you know like are there are the bad people on both sides kind of struggle um so it's really interesting yeah for a vampire story where the vampires don't sparkle um <laughs> here although i have to say i love me some sparkly vampires so that's awesome <laughs> um, i'll mention real quick because it is still relatively new to netflix um the movie and the book I'm thinking of ending things. The book is by Ian Reed. The movie is directed by Charlie Kaufman. Um, it falls in that like psychological, I would call it like psychological horror. It's not built that way, but it is very unsettling. It is mm -hmm. all very unsettling. I read the book. Um, I watched the movie and then I read the book. I read the book in one sitting, which is how I would recommend reading it. And they were both equally unsettling and and I do, and I don't know. So I think that that's something if you're, if you're, if you've watched a lot of what's already, what's already there, that is one that will give you a creepy, a very creepy, um, confusing vibe. And it's the type of thing that unsettles me much more than something like it. Yeah. Personally. Um, so that, anyway, that. like leaves you unsettled, gives you that creepy feeling. It's a super old book. I don't even know if you can find it anymore. Christopher Pike. Um, the passage the the one where they go to mars and they bring something back with them like it that 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 was one of those books that had me just so anxious when i read it because like you yeah. know something's wrong but you, yeah 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 that's liz, one liz mentions uh that all the twilight movies are on hulu right now she or says, on DVD in my house you know <laughs> she says she's been watching them and have has one left to go and that it's a struggle because they are something else they are indeed. They are indeed. Hey, now, don't be hating on my vampires. I, I, I know, I know it's ridiculous, but I enjoy those. I enjoy That's them. That's fine. It is fine. It is yeah. fine. I would rather watch the movie than read the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although some of the cringy lines in the movies are my spider monkey. Um, <laughs> Hold on, Spider. Hold on. The season of passage. Yes, yes, that's it. I knew passage was in the title. Um, yes, Andrea, thank you. Christopher Pike, season of passage. That nice. one, that one I found really creepy and it made me very anxious. Um <laughs> and she, Liz is letting me off the hook for um liking the vampires that sparkle. Okay. <laughs> You just got to own what you're into. You really do. And, and you just got to go with it. But that also means sometimes people are going to make a face at you and you just absorb it and move on. <laughs> Whatever. I can make a face right back. Right. People make <laughs> me all the time. That's why I have, I mean, I have just at this point, I just lean into and boldly state my Bravo persona. I mean, <laughs> I watch yeah. I watch Real Housewives. It's what I do. It's what I enjoy. I'm also watching The Bachelorette. And I have a feeling that the Venn diagram of people who watch this particular show and also The Bachelorette probably doesn't overlap a lot. But if you're in the middle there with me, you know, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and Liz says she can't judge because she is reading Midnight Sun right now. I haven't. I, I, read, it, I read it years ago when it leaked, when it was just like for the half of the story. So I have to go back and finish that one. I I haven't gotten there yet. Um, but, you know, that's one of the rules of librarianship. Ragnar, I can never remember that dude's name. Yeah, right. Um, um, every book their reader, for every reader their book, um, mm -hmm. that's the same is true with any story, whether it's mm -hmm. book or audio book or, right. movie or whatever. For whatever you like, it's out there. And whenever it's out there, there's someone who likes who it. Who likes it. No judgment. Many, many of the Real Housewives have written books. And I've read them all. <laughs> That's why I buy them, even though I don't. <laughs> <Right. read> them. <laughs> oh, 
Oh man, well, we're already at our time. Yeah. So I think next week, oh, Mary wants to know if The Bachelor lives up to Love is Blind. Because she, Mary, I'm actually watching reality shows. I think that Mary and I will have to have a longer conversation about this. Um, it is a totally, it's a totally different thing. But, and you got to know what you're getting into. It's a much bigger commitment. Every season is different. Um, just Mary, Mary, Mary and I will talk. <laughs> That'll have to be a, a longer conversation. We'll have an off-list longer conversation about this. Um, well, I guess it's time to go. It's probably time to go. It was so good to see you. And happy Halloween to everybody happy who Halloween. has and hasn't done their trick-or-treat yet. And uh, we'll be back here next Friday. Yep. No tricks, just treats for everyone, I hope. Exactly. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>